Hi everyone, welcome to project3dprints.com. Today we're going to be assembling the power bank project, the USB power bank project. If you haven't already been online to download the STL files and purchase the electronic kit which goes with the project, then you can do so at project3dprints.com. Otherwise, if you've already done that and you've got your printed parts fresh off the printer, then let's get started. First of all, have a look at the actual 3D printed parts and uh, give some suggestions or tips on the actual printing if you haven't started printing them yet. And also on the cleanup of the parts too. So you have to make sure that these parts are nice and clean for the PCBs and uh, electronics to fit nicely inside. So let's take a look at the first part. The major part here is the is the case itself. The printing orientation for this case is as shown. The shiny side or the LCD opening on the platform. So coming off the printer, you're probably going to have something apart which looks a little bit like this. I've added brim material here to uh, give good adhesion to the bed. And inside you'll see a lot of, uh, there's a fair bit of strings and um, just stray material, especially in between the different uh, regions where support material has been printed. So what we want to do is start off by removing some of that, those major strings inside there some of the tools that I like to use. A uh, set of precision screwdrivers is always really good, ranging from little ones to big ones. Um, just a little set of, of files for cleaning up areas. Um, jewelers files as they're called. Also a utility knife. Got a little utility knife here. Also a big utility knife. Be really helpful as well. And lastly, sometimes just a flat little blade like that can be good for our cleaning up surfaces too. So remove that major material first and then get on to removing the material from our support areas. In this orientation there's only three areas of support material that have been printed. Um, we've got one major one here on the on the front where our USB ports are going. Um, we've got one on the ends where our power button is going. And we've got one at the other end where our uh, LED flashlight um, is going. So I'd recommend removing the material from this middle mini USB port first. can be a little bit delicate, so take your time. Um, don't rush it. Remove as much as you can from around the edges of the support material using a utility knife before you break it out or push out uh, the actual support material. And you can take to it with like a, a small file just to clean up any edges as you may need to. So once you've done that, you're going to have your openings looking something like this. Inside will be uh, nice and clean. Just take note that the PCB actually sits on little standoffs in here. It actually clicks under two standoffs, two little standoffs at the end here, one and two, and then we have two standoffs on each side, one, two, and one, two. So just make sure that there's no strings or stray material um, that can interfere with that, those areas where the PCB sits. Um, also the sliding lid slides in through this almost like a tongue and groove area here. Just make sure that there's no stray material in that area either and around where your clip to hold the cover um, inserts into. You can obviously test the parts to make sure that they all interface properly. So the second part here is our, is our sliding lid. This is printed um, down in that orientation. Doesn't require any kind of support material. Very straightforward print. Again, I'd recommend adding a little bit of brim to this, which you can remove afterwards, um, just to make sure it doesn't lift off the print bed. And we can just check our interface of the part, 
just to make sure you know and you can adjust or remove any material as necessary so it'll just click in like that snugly to remove it just sort of push down slide back lastly we've got our power button here this can be a little bit tricky it's printed in the orientation as shown like that the uh, support method for this I would, uh, or well, the adhesion method I would recommend using a raft method which puts a, a bit of a base down first which part is, there, print, is then printed on otherwise you'll find that the part will actually topple over especially because of such a small part the actual extruder has to move to and from the part uh, in between layers allowing each layer sufficient time to cool otherwise you just end up with one big blob so try raft with that first um, might take you a few goes to get it to get it happening get it working um, but it's not too difficult just make sure the interface with that part this slides into our power button at the end here just for illustration purposes um, it actually slides in from the inside but just make sure that that is nice and loose and tolerance in there that it's not going to get jammed or anything like that so um, otherwise your power button won't work correctly so those are our three parts once they're all cleaned up then we can start assembling things but firstly let's have a look at the electronics uh, kit first of all we've got our obviously the key component is the PCB here has a blue backlit LCD display which tells you the state of the power bank how charged the, the battery is um, we've got two USB ports on the front uh, one's a 1 amp, one's a 2.1 amp for charging your more high power devices such as iPads and then the middle one here is a micro USB which is used to charge the, charge the power bank and that's rated to 5 volts and 1 amp so using just a any kind of charger or USB port on your computer will charge that up uh, with no problems and then of course we've got our battery leads or wires which we'll attach our battery to next we've got our battery holder this is our battery holder for 18650 lithium ion battery which is also included in your kit um, to know that this is very different to an AA battery, it's not the same size, um, it's, it's nothing like an AA battery, it's much bigger. Um, it's a rechargeable battery. It's actually, uh, 1650 battery is what you find in a lot of laptop um, batteries, it makes up a lot of laptop batteries that you find today. So that's our holder. And here's our battery. Um, the one in your kit's rated to 2200 milliamp hours. Uh, this doesn't have a doesn't have a overcharge or short circuit protection as some of these 18650 batteries do, and that's purely because the PCB already has that inbuilt. And lastly, we have our little micro USB to USB cable for charging. So the first step of assembly is to take our button, insert it from the inside, the long end of the button inserts in, make sure that it's nice and loose, it's not getting stuck on anything. We take our PCB, this has to be angled in. First see the short end goes underneath those two clips we talked about earlier at the end here. So the easiest way is to simply angle it in as so. Locate it so that it's tucked in behind those clips. make sure that our button is out of the way then we need to get a little screwdriver and just bend 
this clip out of the way, gently push down. get the PCB underneath that end clip here. You notice that it's not quite sitting flat yet, so we need to just fiddle with it until you get it sitting correctly on the standoffs. I can see here that the PCB needs to come this way, so we can just gently fiddle. and it'll just sort of click in place once you get it in the correct spot like so. So now you see that your USB ports are lining up correctly. Our clip is in the correct place, just overlapping the board. We've got our board sitting flush with the top of the standoffs here and here. And they actually sit on top of the standoffs, you can't see. Now the board's over top of them on the other side. And that's nice and snug in there, that won't move. And just double check, make sure that your button you should be able to hear that just click nicely, pushing up against the button switch on the PCB assembly. So next, we need to install our battery holder. Now if you haven't got a lot of experience with soldering, I highly recommend to, to give it a go, it's not difficult. If you don't have a soldering torch, you can buy them online from our website and get one sent along with your kit. Um, what I find is these things are brilliant. It's just a little butane powered soldering torch. No wires, no need to plug it into the wall. Just recharge with a butane canister. Um, heats up very, very quickly. let that heat for a little bit. So with the battery pack you notice that the wires are coming through from inside to outside. What you want to do is just gently we want to feed those wires back to the inside where the battery is coming from. And with this particular project we want to have the wires on the inside. one, our negative wire. And the other one, our positive one. So they'll be coming over the side like that. So the easiest way to solve is, I would actually probably suggest shortening these wires a little, probably by about half. Just simply clip. And strip some wire off, some little pliers, same with the other one, clip, strip wire off, just twist those. Now we just need to join red to red, pos uh, positive to positive, and black to black, negative to negative. And the easiest way to do this is I would, I would probably add a little bit of solder to one of these wires. So we'll take our soldering torch. It's running nice and hot now. All you do add a little bit of solder as so. Bring the other wire into it. Touch and just work the solder into the other wire so that you have a nice a nice join there. So now that you've soldered those connections together I'm going to just get a little bit of tape just to cover up the connections because we definitely don't want 
them touching one another once we insert the wires into the case. So just using a bit of normal electrical tape, insulating tape, just wrap it around like that. Doesn't have to look pretty. And likewise with the other one. Once you've got those wires nicely taped up, we can insert our battery into the holder, taking over the polarity of the battery, like so. And you'll notice in the case, on each corner there's four little standoffs and notches, which the battery case sits on top of and is clear of the PCB underneath. So just carefully, just putting the wires in a place where they're out of the way, preferably towards the front of the case, you can drop that battery case in. And that's sitting in there snugly as you can see. So lastly, let's get our lid. That slides over top. Nice and snug and stops the battery from moving around. So there you have it. There's the completed project. USB battery power uh, power bank. To activate the unit you need to plug it into a 5 volt source using the micro USB cable. So we simply insert the cable like so and instantly the case will turn on and the battery working out it registers how charged the battery is. You'll need to do that to activate it, otherwise pushing the power button most likely won't do anything, so it needs to be plugged in first, very important. I recommend charging the battery fully before you start using it, so it's always, always a good idea with lithium-ion batteries. So once it is charged, you can then Simply plug in USB and there we go, it starts charging my phone. And you'll notice here I'm charged, I'm plugged into the 1 amp port. If I was to put it over to this port, then I would say 2.1 amps. Lastly, don't forget you've got a little additional feature on this, this gadget of a flashlight, LED flashlight. To activate that you simply double click the button and you have a flashlight as you can see. Double click again and it turns it off. Now this unit will automatically switch itself off after 20 seconds. Uh, if there's a uh, no current being drawn so if it's not plugged in it'll switch itself off after 20 seconds. The screen also turns itself uh, backlit turns off after 10 seconds. So thanks for watching and uh, be sure to check back to project3dprint.com for future projects.